What's up, homies? My homies, my brethren. What's up, homies? What's up, homies? <laughs> homies at home, homies at work, homies in your car, homies at, you know what I'm saying? It's your side chick's house. Mm, damn. Homies that just got into it with their baby mama, baby daddy. Mm. Homies that's at work right now. Mm. Second shift homies. Mm. We always forget about them niggas. Mm. That's nasty. Third shift homies. Shout out to y'all. Feel me? All the homies around the world. Shout out. Shout out to the West Coast. Shout out to us. Shout out to you. Shout out to the West Coast. To the- <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to Canada, though, because I don't even like Rick Ross like that after he was on that bullshit. So <laughs> shout out to Canada, too. Nigga. Yep. Gotta say that. <laughs> Held it down. Stop inserting. That, that should be a lesson, nigga. Stop inserting yourself in some shit you ain't got shit to do with. Facts. You heard me? That include dirty bitches, too. <laughs> but how you niggas doing? <laughs> <laughs> Man, listen. How you niggas? I'm all right, bro. I'm surviving. Mm hmm. Still trying to catch up, get my bearings right. Mm. Bearings. It was a long week. In. Weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is this today? Monday? Mondays are sacred. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we made it to church. Woo! So my mama used to say, I don't care what you do, just as long as you make it to church, son. Well, we had church. <laughs> church. Yeah, I'm good, the though. The congregation say amen. Yeah. That's fine. What's up, man? How you been, brother? Had a crazy weekend, man. Just trying to keep my legs up under me. <laughs> That's a fact, That's nigga. <laughs> that is a fucking fact, nigga. Oh my god! I ain't yeah. gonna lie, nigga. That's that's probably the best way to put it because it's nigga, like, nigga, what, what the fuck is going on? That is the that's it. That'd be the name of this podcast. Just trying to keep our legs up under us, man. That's it. Tripod, anyways. I'm glad y'all doing good, man. Welcome How you doing, a, nigga? Welcome to another episode. I'm good. Um, shit. Oh, I'm tired of this. Is what I this is what I gotta say, bro. Oh, I'm tired of what'd you say? I said get your shit up. I'm tired of holidays. I'm tired of holidays. Yeah. <laughs> <It's crazy. laughs> Elaborate. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> nah, just I just want to say fuck y'all holidays. I'm looking straight into the camera. Zoom in on me, man. Fuck y'all holidays. I don't give a fuck about none of y'all holidays. July fourth. Shit, Christmas, none of these motherfucking holidays, you know, for some reason, they end up being a lot of fucking money, a lot of commotion, a lot of going here and there. Motherfuckers want to party harder, drink more, and I'm just in there, part of the herd. <laughs> Fuck y'all holidays. You ain't selling brain. None of my family's birthday, none of my niggas' birthday on July 4th. If your birthday on July 4th, this ain't for you. Happy birthday. We ain't even know Joy birthday. Yeah. I still don't know the nigga right there. <laughs> Shit, I do. <laughs> what is it? But- uh, anyways, no little, little. <laughs> what's your social security number? <laughs> I know it. Nah. <laughs> nah, fuck your holidays, man. It's a lot of money, a lot of running around. Yeah, I'm cool on it for real, for real. Yeah. I, if one thing about our weekend, nigga, I'm old. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I'm cool. Boy. You know what I mean? I gotta be more planned, better planned when these things are going down because this was so unplanned and we just jumped into it. And typically, guess what? This shit be happening around holidays. Holidays is literally the catalyst for a lot of crazy shit that be going on. And I ain't complaining. I ain't complaining. I don't want this to be a complaint thing. But I'm just like saying. I like you complaining, I'm nigga. I'm just saying. I ain't complaining. You a Jace if you ain't complaining. You said what? You a yeah, Jace. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm right there. I'm, I'm complaint parallel, nigga, for sure. I'm just saying. Fuck that! Fuck y'all holidays! <laughs> fuck y'all holidays! I do not care about them. Yeah. Maybe Christmas, you feel me? Maybe Christmas. Okay, I get it. Everybody need a little Christmas. Okay, but other than that, man, like I said, fuck y'all holidays, man. Period. And that's on me, man. I know a lot of y'all probably fuck with holidays, and I get it. I fuck with holiday pay. Yeah, that's about it, bro. That's fire. What's good, though, man? What are we talking about? What's the lead story today? Let's pod, nigga. We here. We got to wake up. Let's bring some fucking energy today. Let's do it. Let's fucking do it. What's the A story? Mm. Bronny, nigga. I don't know. Shit, ain't no A story. I ain't got one. I don't know. Did, did we, talk? we ain't talking about Bronny. That's a good story. That's a good start. He doing his thing. G, G League. Nah, that ain't, it ain't G League. Yeah. Summer League. Summer League. Yeah. Didn't yeah. have four points. <laughs> I can't stand it, bro. <laughs> fuck y'all holidays and fuck that little four points y'all be blowing up, bro. Damn. Damn bro. What's wrong? Because, man, shit, I'm still I'm recovering, nigga. Hell yeah. On a holiday, nigga. What? 
<laughs> Why you the yelling? Holidays, bro. <laughs> You need to know, nigga. You okay, yeah. bro? I'm all right. I'm chilling, bro. Fuck y'all holidays, though. Fuck y'all holidays. Yeah. Did y'all do anything for the fourth? Uh, ran around. Ripped the run. That's a That's fuck day holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I dropped yeah. my daughter off to her cousin. Mm-hmm. I was supposed to link up with somebody, but... It's just a lot. Tired. I got in a crib, and I was like, oh, fuck this. It's a lot of running around. Who you supposed to link up with? Just a little homie. A little homie? Oh. Yeah. All right, next. What you do on the fourth, bro? Uh, kicked it with the family, of course. I had the grill. Well, shout out to my nigga Mike. He made the pause, he made the ribs. So I was in charge of everything else. Hot as hell. Mm. Turned the fuck up. Then, what else did I do? I On a fucking holiday. Yeah, fuck a holiday. But we do that regardless. So it's like that was just. That's what I'm saying. Thing. You can do everything you're doing on a holiday without with way less stress. Yeah. And just do that shit any other it time. Do, especially when you in like a family vibe like how I am. So it's, it's a like stressful sometimes. I can understand like shout out to Carissa and Mike. They always host everything. Imagine how stressed so, they be. Yeah. They got to clean and, up all and, your nigga shit. Bro, I just cleaned up today. Did you wash some dishes? Nah, I grilled. That's my part. Hey, that's how you get out of the other shit. <laughs> nah, I'd rather wash dishes than grill, nigga. I ain't going to oh, lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. nah you right, though. That grill, like, uh. <laughs> You right think, though. Sometimes, some days, it yeah. just depends. If, if you, it wasn't was you in the mood, I, I mentally prepared because okay. Mike was like, "I'm not grilling," and I was like, "I get it." Yeah. So I do it. All right, that's better. Yeah. So like, I mentally prepared to do it. So when I got up, we were supposed to start at two. So it was like, all right, mm-hmm. you need to get there at twelve to start. And I'm like, fuck, y'all know I need my naps and shit, bro. Mm-hmm. But by the time I woke up, I'm getting ready. Carissa hit me like. Uh, she hit the group chat like, yeah, we probably just gonna start at like three or four because they was up late that night. I'm like, nigga, I'm already up now. I, I'm already got mentally prepared. So once you mentally prepared, it's we over. Got to go through. We got to go through it. Exactly. That's bruh. Yeah, it was lit though. And then shout out to my manager, nigga. He called me Friday morning like, Jay, I got you on standby. You wanna be off? <laughs> yes, nigga. <laughs> don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. Yes, nigga. Please and thank you. Yeah, don't so mind that was if a, I do, baby. That was a good. That was a good little extra because I just was like, damn, I know I got to go to work because I felt like everybody was gonna be calling off because it was right after the fourth or whatever. But that's one good part about where I'm at and my company is like I don't have a route, like I don't have a set route, so I go wherever they need me. So by me not having a set route, it was like fuck it. We don't need you today. I'm like, all right, bet. He's like, I need you tomorrow, dog, on Saturday. I was like, I'll be there, bro. That's how I sound. Bro, oh, my God. I wish I ain't going to say his name, but yeah. he a nigga. He from Lincoln Heights. Okay. He talk like that, bro. That's hilarious. That's like, well, it's country. He be fun. like, gee. How old is he? Uh, She probably like 40. 45, yeah, 50, something like, 40. like that. But I knew him before I worked there. Yeah. So I'm like, bro, this nigga from Alabama or some shit? Yeah. Uh, that nigga from, but he cool as fuck, bro. He be holding me down. That's why, I like, I don't be complaining. Like, if he asks me to do some extra shit, I got yeah. you because I know he gonna hold me down. Shout out to good work and yeah, for sure. That's for sure. Right, I yeah, think, uh, awesome. I think that's super important. Once again, fuck y'all holidays, but holiday pay is good. Oh yeah, I love uh, holiday pay. But still, man, fuck y'all holidays. I'm still on that shit, man. I don't <laughs> give a fuck. Like, so what's man, the like? I'm, I get the like the hustle and bustle of it. Is yeah. that like the main thing? I, th- I that's it, bro. I yeah. see so many people. So you know, it, if it's the holiday, here's what I notice. I notice this around Christmas time over the last few years too. Just being more mm-hmm. observant, uh, motherfuckers out there just be having the worst hearts on Christmas. They be zooming through traffic. Like you said, they got stress. They probably got to clean dishes and grill, nigga. Like you know what I mean? Who knows what's going on? The stress of having the funds to do it. Right, yeah. it's just a lot, you know. Uh, for me personally, the July Fourth really just—that's why I'm on it, bro. It's because I'm just watching. I'm like, damn, everything just revolve around this one day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even like at the store, shit was just slower because motherfuckers traveling. I, I was like, damn, like, mm-hmm. like holidays really affect all of America. Like it, big ones like that, like July Fourth, shut everything down. I mean, they got sales, right? Mm-hmm. Fucking hours of fucking different places is different. Product, I think you know? I pulled up somewhere and the shit was closed. I'm like, y'all closed? Oh, it's the holiday. Fuck a holiday. It's a money move. Products make new new packaging off that holiday. So. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, All the fireworks. Hopefully the fireworks oh are wrapped up. Oh, my God. I'm, that's you still hearing something? 
Bro, I thought I was in Baghdad the other night, saying. nigga. And this wasn't even the fourth, nigga. This was like the sixth, nigga. I'm like, bro. <laughs> What's today? Uh, it's the eighth, nigga. I just heard hey, one on the way here, nigga. Nigga, I'm like, bro, I ain't run out of this shit. Nigga. But I get it, though, because, like, I used to be excited about fireworks. Like, yeah. I ain't going to say I would never do them again, but it's just like the allure of it was like, all right, we didn't did the big shit. Like, back yeah. in the day, did that shit, so. It's yeah. like a family thing. Like, yeah. yeah. Get your family, then it's gone. Yeah. Those holidays, yo, fuck the holidays. Yeah. It's like. Cause once Vela, you know what I mean. Once you go up, you gonna be going like you went to the solar thing. You gonna be going to all them holiday events again. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I still I got a teenager, so it's certain things that we gotta do for her What's the as solar well. Thing? Uh, what'd you say? What's the solar thing? You talking about the eclipse? Fireworks, solar eclipse. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She she enjoyed that. I mean, I don't think she would. She don't know what that is yet. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, just fuck the holidays. Obviously, like <laughs> for me. Obviously, for the kids, okay, it's, I'm going to be there. We're going to make it right for them. And I think I'm done going to see fireworks, really. Like, I, I'm typically the type that's, like, going to gather everybody. Like, let's go see the fireworks. Mm -hmm. But I don't really want to do crowds no more. I don't want to do loud sounds. Like, mm -hmm. I was with my baby mama, and it was, like, a day before, and they were already, you know, a lot of the, the towns do their little fireworks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and this is what thought I had. I was like, damn, like, you could just see it. You just see, like, over the whole landscape, mm -hmm. motherfuckers, Every five miles, fucking big ass, you know, the big ones. You could tell the, the yeah. you know, Sharonville or some shit or whatever you want to call the neighborhoods was doing their own fireworks. And they typically do it like a day before or just the weekend before. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just looked at it. I was like, man, you know what? I was like, I was like, if I was a foreign country, this would be the perfect time to attack America. Because <laughs> you ain't going to yeah. know. It just, it sound like missiles in the, in the, in the distance. Do. Just, you know what I'm saying? Like you, the response time going to be a lot slower because everybody's just going to kind of be like, oh, that was just another firework. She's like, I, yeah, I uh, hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> it's like me too, but yeah. I yeah. seen somebody posted a um, picture from an airplane, like on Fourth of July, flying over, Sorry, like no, all the fireworks. Fire. That shit was cool. I know that. But cool. yeah, I'm cool on the the loud noises, nigga. Yeah, man, and and uh, I much rather be with the family and do those fireworks, you know, in, in the backyard on some acres with some mm -hmm. fire. You know what I'm That's saying? Awesome. Do our own shit. Then go to like red, white, and blue ash again or something, right? I'm, I'm cool mm -hmm. on the crowds. I'm cool on all the fireworks, the, ha the hustle and bustle. I think another thing is just too hot to be outside and, and with a bunch of group of people, bro. It do be hot. Like even when we was in that one spot, like okay, let's go because it's just I was ready. Like I'm like man, it's it's tight. Mm -hmm. Came in and out, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the next spot. It was tight in there, but we kind of like had our own little bubble, so it made it cool. Like, it's more room. You could move too. around. Yeah, yeah, it was like a, a bubble. So and the I, uh, energy was different though. Also, like, huh? If the energy is different, it, oh yeah, 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 it yeah. feel different. Energy is always important too, for sure. In those type of spots, like what was it like a Latin night or something? It was mm -hmm. different. It was just something different. Like That's we just we just ran in on something that. different. Yeah, I was like, like what the fuck going nigga, on? We was in Miami for a night, nigga. Welcome to Virgin Islands. Where the fuck was that? <laughs> yup. So shout out to uh, all our Latin. Listeners. I think it might be different for me too because like how my family is. Y'all know how my family is. Like we do this on a regular, so this ain't really mm -hmm. nothing new. Mm -hmm. Like next Sunday, it'll probably be That's what the I'm same yeah. people over there, yeah. and we always, yeah. hey, can you bring this? You on this boom boom boom. Yep. So, but like, if you're not used to that, I can see how that a yeah like throw you. Yeah. Used to what? Like, if you're not used to just like we literally probably cook out every other weekend. Mm hmm And it's every like every weekend we together. Mm hmm It might it's like we got this bubble, then we got a little bit of outer shell. Mm -hmm. So like when we get to like the holidays, like you saying, like the three layers out might that's be when it gets stressful yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. extra on yeah. holidays bro you know get with your family on, on regular days and I, I think that's another thing that's what's happening literally motherfuckers is forcing too much to happen on one day yeah if you spread that stuff out you are good you know what i mean so in our family when we get together it's never really just like the holidays with the focus holidays mm -hmm. we typically like all right where are we doing yeah. and we just do it you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying but we, it, it, I don't get it, man. A lot of people really just focus on the holiday. That's why I say fuck America's holidays. I don't give a shit. Y'all can whatever y'all want to do to me. But at the end of the day, man, like, I don't care. Like, I almost want to be the nigga that don't care about them. And I'm only going to fake it till I make it with, like, my children. 
they the only person that's gonna know. Mm. Like, Dad must love Christmas because he really takes it <laughs> serious with us. Mm. Whole time they gonna listen to this pod in twenty thirty four and be like, "Oh, this nigga never liked any mm. holidays." <laughs> I didn't. I just loved you, baby. I want you to enjoy it. You probably mm. at this age don't like them holidays either. Mm. Now that you know, you know what I'm saying. So, but yeah, fuck them holidays, man. Uh, y'all got any any topics y'all want to talk about? I sound. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? Nah, I just sent a video in. The, you know, the week was the week. The week was. I mean, it was a good week. It was a good week. I did. I did have some work. Um, yeah, I seen you in a Tesla truck, nigga. What's going on? Yeah, What's going on? It, it was a vibe. You cop? You cop? You know, <laughs> New ride. You know, they let me borrow for the weekend yeah. just to see it, you know, just to see how the, the, the vibes yeah, move. Gotta test Talking it out. about benefits of work, nigga, what you mean? Mm-hmm. Gotta it's, test it's it right. But now, I was, I was producing this little show for one of the influencers in the city, man. I feel like it's going to be good. Yeah. It's going to be a good What one. kind of show is it? Just like a cooking show, you know what oh, I mean? okay. So, Did you get to eat something? There was some food. Like, when I'm working, I don't even be having an appetite. You be so busy, yeah. It'd be, I'll be running around, and then I'm doing, like, producer work, too, like, just getting people organized, For you know, because sure. a lot of people on the set they didn't really know what was going on, like yeah. or, or the flow of things. So I'm like, I'm thinking this person got it, yeah, but they in the clouds, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> oh, so, yeah. I, so I'm like, that's how I be when I be DJing. They be like, you want something to eat? Da, da, da. I be like, mm-hmm. nah, it's too much going on, too yeah. many moving parts. Be like in the flow, you know, yeah, be in the flow. And plus, once I eat, nigga, I be tired. I'm like, Man. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's mean, bro. Like I'm not. Yeah, that's just scary as fuck, ain't it, nigga? What the fuck was that? Imagine three o'clock in the morning, you hear that shit. Was that the ice maker? <laughs> yeah, I, I be having to turn that shit off. <laughs> <laughs> no bullshit. And then it's gonna do a sound like <laughs> it's gonna do like when the water refill. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah fuck that shit, nigga. I don't even fuck with ice like that. <laughs> I was gonna have to stomp somebody out. I thought somebody brought their boyfriend back, but the boyfriend saw the location hey. and was like, "Hold on." Hey, shout out to the nigga in the charger. <laughs> <laughs> My boy, <laughs> fucked your night up, didn't it? <laughs> Poor guy. What? So we got some free merch coming towards y'all. <laughs> but that's the all. Oh, that's the uh, other thing. Just to bring it up, like, what is Fourth of July? It's our Independence Day, right? <laughs> like that's the American like Fourth of July, bro. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> so on. Had it something had week. to happen, bro. Let's get to the root of it, bro. Nah, Come on, this bet. is so, a safe place for men to congregate and shit. say how we feel. So. Tell us really what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Type shit. <laughs> uh, nah, though, I, I was having another thought. It's probably just this thought, nigga. I'm like, all right, look. So if. <laughs> um, Independence Day, right? That was like literally a war to get that, right? Mm-hmm. So you definitely give veterans on that day probably a little more respect. I'm sure they even got veteran events for that day, for mm-hmm. 4th of July. It's just another day to commemor- commemorate them. But these motherfuckers got to hear these fucking popping ass fireworks. This nigga was just in Iraq the other day. You pow, pow. He- Bruh, so how know. much are you really commit? Com- uh, how much are you really, what, how do you say it, commemorating that nigga? Like, you ain't commemorating him. You know what I mean? Like, damn, do it for our troops, bro. So, um, I looked up why we do fireworks on 4th of July. Oh, I know that. Star Spangled Banner, nigga. <coughs> Play the national anthem. I don't want the CIA thinking I'm saying. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. They gonna we get your ass, shall nigga. overcome. They gonna get Trump, your Trump. motherfucking ass. <laughs> Trump gonna be on your ass. Like, oh, we got we got uh, one. We got one that don't like holidays here in, in, mm-hmm. in the nation, y'all. Let's get him. You gonna tell the Mexican to come get your black job? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, explain that to me. I didn't see that part. I've been seeing it. And I got it. I, I you know I put context clues together, but I love yeah. it from my nigga. Everybody's like, I got black job. Yeah, I was gonna put the hashtag when I was showing that dude, that white dude dancing to uh, "Not Like Us," but I ain't understanding <laughs> enough, so I ain't do it. I was about to say at my black job, <laughs> but I'm not hardly as extra white. Now Trump was just saying like uh, Biden is lending immigrants in, and all those immigrants are taking black jobs, so people are just like playing the joke of, of course, when you come in as an immigrant, you do the low underlying and work, right? Mm. So everybody's just putting those correlations together. Yeah. And, yeah. People, black on. doctors and whatever, doing <laughs> content like right, doing my oh, black yeah, job. <laughs> yeah, so it's like saving white lives. <laughs> it's crazy because I feel like I do a white job. Like when people see me, they be like, "The fuck you doing?" 
<laughs> I get the same shit too, yeah. nigga. But yeah, I get that. I, I get that. I definitely get that. Motherfuckers, it, there are the difference between white jobs. But what's a black job though? Like name a black job. I mean, those things are there's truth in that this is something white people would do or this is something black people would do. For sure. I know that. I get that. But name one black job. Just name one. Cutting watermelon. That's racist. All right, yours turn, that's, bro. That's, that's a, yeah, that's fucked up. I don't even think that's a job. <laughs> <laughs> nah, somebody hey. ain't getting paid to cut watermelon. I was going to say sports. Like, uh, Ooh, sports. that's good. That's a black job. Depending on the sports. Though. NBA, that's a black job. NBA is a black job. NFL is a black job. NFL is a black job. NFL front out office. Mm-hmm. Pimping. Door Pimping pimp. is a black job. Mm-hmm. Well, for sure. nah, it's good. Pimping. Yeah, we Pimping. just moving on. That was a good one. Pimping since pimp, pimp. Yeah. What else yeah. is a black job? We need at least three more to make it full, bro. Come on. That's what I'm saying. What else is a black job? That's what I'm saying. Ain't really no black jobs, nigga. It, I, for me, it's like. Ain't no black jobs, bitch. Biden and motherfucker Trump. Both of y'all motherfuckers. Black jobs. Ain't none. That's what we need. We need black jobs. For so, some. I don't know. All jobs. That's what I'm saying. Ain't all no jobs. Are all jobs. D- all jobs DJ matter. DJ. Oh, that's a white job too, bro. Motherfuckers be over there and the mother countries with million lights flashing on beat. <laughs> the motherfuckers be white and sweet, nigga. That's true. That's true. Them niggas sell out arenas. That's a mm-hmm. shit. That's everybody job for sure. Rapping. That's, that's a, a black, black job. job. Eminem did that. <laughs> Eminem was working at a black job. Uh, true. true, true, true. It's I, I ain't gonna say no it it's fucked up. Nah, say you right. Say cutting watermelon, it. nigga. <laughs> you can't get worse than that <laughs> Cause you cut your own watermelon When you get home nigga What you want me to dance for <laughs> Shucking and jive Shucking and jive uh, That's all I got bro I don't even know about black job, Yeah bro. I don't wanna get canceled I ain't gonna lie Black job in Cincinnati The rump, rumpy truck drivers Every time I see them rumpy niggas They niggas <laughs> I fucking hate them niggas bro See He races <laughs> no, I hate I hate trash day in general. Nigga. Oh my god! Because now it's two big imagine. ass trucks on this little ass imagine. street. Oh my god! Like, I couldn't man. imagine, bro. I would be woo. get the fuck out my way, my boy. Damn, and they just stop. They get and they yeah. disrespectful. That's how I know they niggas. Because I'm be driving, them niggas be looking at me like high as hell, like. And they be the worst when it's just one nigga driving and oh, getting the trash. Over. over. Oh my god, that nigga <laughs> moving two miles per hour too. It's crazy, nigga. Yeah, it is three o'clock in the afternoon. You ain't got the second wind yet. Right, you need a helper, nigga. Look at us looking at black jobs. Black jobs. That's fucked up, though. Uh, so, that's all I got. A, what's a white job? Everything, nigga. Giving a blow job. Every, every, ooh. <laughs> that's nah. a myth, though, for real. What? That's a myth. What? I was about to black. go there. I already know what you're talking about. Hell yeah, black. Yeah. My black women give great head, nigga. Oh my gosh. Better Shout head than white y'all. girls. Period. I ain't gonna lie. My best head comes from black women. Shout out to our sponsor. Shout out to so you. So if y'all want to donate some head to the pod, just, you know what I'm saying, reach out yeah. to Player Circle Bible Study Class. Yeah. <laughs> we'll figure out what's going on. We'll figure out what's going on. You know you what I mean? keyword head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to drop the pussy off, we'll accept that as well. Hey, my nigga No Name said chime in, Zell in back right. that day. Yeah, so, hey. hey, bring it how it come. You heard me? That'll be fire. I don't want I'm trying to get my life together. Now that's fact. Shit, so we, nah, I send that in. We should offer services for bitches who don't know how to give head. You know what I mean? We'll that's teach fire. You, you know I mean? A fucking Pay clinical, us. a clinic, on yeah. something, the head boy. clinic, nigga. Pay us, we all get the top from you. I mean, we ain't gonna teach them, my boy. You know what I'm we gonna get the top from them. We gonna tell them now. Nah, you need to add more wrist. Yeah. Put the tongue up. Your, Come on, we got y'all, ladies. We it's, it's a one on one consultant, baby. Fucking like head it. clinic. One on one consultant. God, my fuck is a goal, bro. Yeah, that's a good goal, bro. Or it could even be just rate my head type shit. Cause yeah, some goal. people, I had this one girl, bro. She was like, I hate giving head because I feel like I'm doing bad at it. And she was actually one of the best. <laughs> I'm like, bro, got your that, ass, nigga. No, You're good. No, 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 no. That that's real. I don't think she got him. I think he like. No, she, I'm dead she dead. really was probably like. She really felt what she said. Yeah. I've heard the same thing. And that goes to show you the confidence. Confidence. Just having the confidence to put you miles ahead. Mm-hmm. Like, I think we was talking about, like, you know, there's women who got all the technique, right? They know how to do all the, the fancy, artful shit, right? Yep. But it don't make you come. 
Whereas you get a woman who just know how to get to it technically. And I ain't saying like quick, you know what I mean? It's still a vibe. It's still something enjoyable, but it's just a difference. A woman can just do it technically, know she, what she's doing, get you there. And just because you artful don't mean you good. She got his ass because they wanted, they broke you down. She made you comfortable and mm. not your expectation levels mm. were down here. But this was after this was after she already gave me it. Mm. I see both of y'all simulations. Yeah, but, like hey. she was like, I'm like, but she was like, I just don't, I don't like to do it because I feel like I'm not good at it. Da 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 da. Well, and I'm like, no. And then, but she would always give no, me. No, I believe it though. So it wasn't like, like she was saying it. that to get I, out of giving me yeah, it. That, she would do it. She was just she, saying that she went, she ain't like y'all. I don't heard that, bro. That's she was yeah. dead ass, bro. She was. She was yeah. Dead. My, she I was mean, fine. my got you wasn't to get out of giving head. Mm. Some of them to to make you. Yeah, that's true too. With they head. That's true too. The three simulations. That's true yeah. too. Yeah, hell yeah, that's true too. A bitch will do some shit like that. Try to, you know what I mean? Like, let me let me show him where I'm not, mm-hmm. so I can blow his mind. Shout out to the head givers, bro. Yeah, shout out to the head y'all givers. Need it. And if y'all need to consult, we got one on one sessions of right? Mm-hmm. We got we got three uh, head coaches. Head, head clinic. You can choose your own therapist. We got you. It's crazy. Shout out to our sponsors, Black That's Women. That's fire. Shout out to what do you say? I missed it. I was shouting out the Black Women sponsors. What do you say? <laughs> I'm over here going in my simulation now. <laughs> yeah, I feel like yeah. motherfuckers will really sign up for that though. Hey, let's go. Let's do it. Then. Yeah. Got like a three three step course. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We got the nah. It's got to be more than three steps because it's got to be like seven, seven steps to the greatest head given Look something though, like that. This what it is. Seven day program. You yeah, gotta, yeah. you gotta. This what you do. You sign up. You sign your waivers. And you gonna have it's what's, a, what's the waivers including? Uh, it. no, just consent. That's all we need is consent. There we go. That's what I'm saying. Say it. <laughs> and when, so the the we're first gentlemen. week, we're gentlemen. Yeah, every other day. You get with one of the coaches. You get three one on ones with each coach, and then we come together. Three one on ones. Yeah. So that's nine head sessions. No. 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 One, me, you, and him at one time. No, no. nigga. <laughs> listen, I mean, listen, if you listen, down listen. for that, <laughs> we can add that. That's the bonus package right there. That's why I do what I do, nigga. Keep but, talking. But I'm saying, like, you got me one day, you the other day, you the other day. <laughs> wow. And then we gonna come together as a unit. Hey, y'all we gonna assess niggas. it. We gonna assess the head. Yeah, we gonna, we gonna rate it, and yeah. we gonna come back to you with a performance plan. With the best. And then if you complete the course, you get a beautiful 100% peak cotton shirt that says official head tackler. Boom. Boom. Shout out to uh, Sign up's opening soon, nigga. Nah, boom. Shout out to the bitch for the Tyler Perry movie. <laughs> What's her name? Tasha? The twin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She Why gave, we keep talking about her? I don't know. She <laughs> this is the second pod we miss, mentioned her. Bro. Hey, she probably a great head giver. Pause. Nah, we need to go ahead and get that going. I don't, yeah. Um, That's out. Yeah, let's come up with a title. Let's do that shit. That's fun. Y'all ever got head with a condom on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tried it. Yeah, I did too. When I was young, for sure. It lasted. Then, it lasted all of 20 seconds, maybe. I had some weird chick who had, like, still had flavored condoms. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all remember the first time? No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. How long ago was that? <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> hey, if that's anywhere in 23 or 24, she got to be locked up. <sighs> this bitch is out there with flavor condom still. Yeah, it was that's a, a it thing. Was, it was a little minute ago, but it was crazy. It was crazy. Do y'all remember the first time y'all got hit? Mm-hmm. I remember mine vividly, nigga. I was mm-hmm. 13 and... It was this. It was this girl. She lived across the street. I ain't gonna say her name, but she was kind of like a hoe. <laughs> she was older too. And I remember one night we was. You know how niggas just be outside. I was at my grandma's house, and she was like, "I'm gonna suck your dick tomorrow." Whoa, <laughs> nigga, I couldn't sleep that night. <laughs> I ain't even gonna hold you. I went to sleep. I went. I finally went to sleep. Hey, and this niggas ain't had cell phones, nothing. Nah, but she just lived across the street. You got to go knock on the door. You still going to do like, that thing you said you're going to do? Right. She said her mama go to work at a certain time. Mm. I got up, washed up, nigga. <laughs> he was ready. Man, I go over there. Because, like, it was literally across the street. And she had she had a little brother and a little sister. So I went, I went in there. <laughs> they had twin beds like this. Oh, my God. He got <laughs> head. Bro, I'm sitting there. She was like, take it out. I was like, 
She was a okay. boss bitch about it. Right. We need to come her, have her as a guest speaker at our bruh, clinic. I, 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 bro, I wish I could find her, bro. She did it three times, like up and down three times. And then her little brother climbed through the fire. You said she did what three times? She went up and down on my dick three times. And you came? Only no. Three, three circles. Yeah, and then her little brother came in the, the fucking fire escape, like. Oh, he knew what she was doing. I swear to God. I swear to God. This he said, said, hey, you in there sucking dick again? No, no. He said something worse. Oh, he no. said, I timed that up perfectly. Oh, my God. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was like. That, that nigga listened to the pod right now. Bruh, I put my <laughs> shit on. Went back across the street. I remember the first person I told was my nigga Mike. I was like, bro, I got my dicks. I felt like the man, bro. I ain't going to mm-hmm. hold you up. I felt like the fucking man. Yeah, that's and great. then it's been down here ever since. Because <laughs> <laughs> it ain't nothing like some fire here, bro. Yeah. I, I don't remember mine. I don't know. You don't? I don't think so. Man. I'm thinking. But, and you remember that was yours? Be- I remember my first time, and I remember the best time. Yeah, I don't remember. My yet. first best year. Good head. Huh? That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking about first best head. Maybe I just need to think back to the first time. I had have some fire head. I can't even tell you the best time. Oh, I remember the first time I had. It was horrible. <laughs> I forgot about it. That's why. <laughs> Good job, black it out. Yeah, it was horrible, bro. Shorty had braces. Mm. Oh, shit. It was bad, bro. But I've had some fire hair from girls that had braces. Oh no, nah, yeah, I was a fresh, I was a freshman in high school, so she was a freshman, so I'm sure she just ain't know what to do with them, you know, with her mouth at the time. But all right, I'll tell you a story. So I'm at Mason. This is when I first moved out to the suburbs. It's my first first exposure to some, oh uh, damn, white people living like this out here. <laughs> so there was this little white girl. Mm-hmm. I was like really on her ass for real. Like she, I was infatuated with her for real, for real, like. And then at that time, I wasn't really fucking, so I think I was just infatuated with her. Like, I could say that. Like, I was just like, okay, I like how she moved. Like, she a white girl. Her hair, her uh, arms was a little hairy or something. You know what I mean? I was like, all right, I can get over that. Real. Yeah, it's a little different. You know what I mean? I ain't used to all that. But we was chopping up. We kicking it. We kicking it. And there was this girl. I ain't going to say her name because she be around the city still. You know what I'm saying? She a nice young lady, but she going to know after this. I'll take us to the next level, bro. Yeah. yeah and Rebecca. then. Rebecca. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So she, uh, yeah, she, I guess she was friends with the girl, and she told him, like, yeah, I know him. Actually, she went to our church. So she was in the same grade, and she went to my church. Like, yeah, he goes to my church, and she told her I had another little girlfriend, because I did. Like, I had another little girlfriend I would bring to church every once in a while. And, you know, as a little freshman. Like, you was advanced, nigga. You was taking hoes to church in fucking was, high school. Bro, I really was. I don't think I went. Th- I didn't start going to church to college, nigga. Yeah, I really was, bro. Like, that was uh, shit. But anyway, so took her to church. So she snitched, whatever. And uh, she lived in my neighborhood. We lived in this, like, townhouse, the townhouse apartment complex. So I think I confronted her or something. Like, yeah, you, uh, why you hating? Like, da, da, da. Because old girl, the white girl dumped me. Like, that was my little girlfriend. We went together, like, three days. That was mm-hmm. it, man. We was cool as shit. And then uh, she was, I was like, why you uh, told her? She was like, whatever, you shouldn't be doing A, B, and C. And I do not know how, bro. I don't know what happened from everything I'm telling y'all, nigga, to I ended up being in her parents' half bathroom downstairs and she's sucking my dick. <laughs> fire. It just went there, but it was not fire. It was horrible. Like, it was all teeth. I'm just like, <laughs> you know, I had watched porn, so I kind of knew the flow of this shit. Like, <laughs> I don't supposed think it's to supposed to be like, like one, two, three, right? four, up, five, six, seven, up, <laughs> down. Like that shit supposed what? to be. Like, <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying. Like it was, I know that shit supposed to be like one, two, three, four, something. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit was like one, two, three, four, down, five, six. Seven. I'm like, oh my god! And imagine every time it was a tooth there too. Like I was like, oh my god! So I ain't even like here for another year after that. I said fuck it. Especially with the hoes with the braces, I looked at them like you can't do nothing for me, baby. Okay. Yeah, but that was my first time ever getting hit. Uh-huh. My first fire time getting hit. Trying to think, man. I don't have some money. I ain't had fire head till college. Kind of college because my, my, damn, my, my shorty from the church, it was like a little African Shout shorty. Little tr- church you know shorties mean? be giving oh, yeah. fire head, yeah. They really put the spirit in it. We used to, we used to travel. My That's dad had a, we had the church here in Cincinnati, a church in Indiana. Uh oh. And then the shorty lived in Indiana. But then, like, it, <laughs> it was school time. So then she wanted, she lived on campus. Mm. She, she went to Indiana. In Bloomington, mm. so I drove down there. You know, what I mean, I had a little flowers. You know, what I mean, like uh, we about to kick it. 
So pause. He oh my mind, bro. I remember my first fire hand now. I'm Ooh. trying to think where my first I'm trying to think. You do yours. I'm I remember yeah. now. So uh she was my girl back then and she was in college. And I used to go to her campus. It was like local. Mm. I used to go down to her dorm, you know, do the whole sneak in type shit, right? Uh there's a private school too, so y'all mm. can probably deduce whatever y'all want to fucking do. But other than that, you know, you I done had to sneak past the RA, you know what mm. I mean? All that shit. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? One day it was like some big party that they were doing. And, you know, I was a badass kid around the time when I was supposed to be in school. So I'm out here in the streets for real, 18, 19. And so they were celebrating something. That's when I first, like, all oh, these colleges do these big, you know, like how you see do the block party or, mm-hmm. you know, oh, you do their thing around Halloween. It was just like one of them. I can't tell you what it was, but they had like the, the uh, you know, they had come and had the shuttle buses. It was like my first time experiencing this yeah. stuff. You know what I mean? She was like a year older, too, or two. So she was like a sophomore. So I'm looking young. I'm like, this kind of fire. Like, motherfuckers getting drunk like crazy. I'm around a bunch of crazy drunk white boys. I'm like, this is lit. And this was the first time I was around her while she was drunk. Mm. So she was drunk as shit. And I'm like, on her ass. She was fired to me. Like, I'm like, damn, she bad. And to see her going out with the titties out and being drunk, I'm like, this is different. <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to go to college one day. Mm. So... Man, we go back to her room that night, bro. You know, sneak in, like I said, get in there, bro. Shorty gave me the wildest, craziest head ever. I'm talking about, like, she used her breasts, like, hands, bro, like, sloppy. It was some shit that I was dreaming of from what I saw on the internet. Like, yeah. it never gave it to me like that again. Man. And we stayed together, like, a whole year after that. <laughs> like, that was the most fire head I had up to that point, bro. That's crazy. You remember yours now, bro? I think mine... So, my, I'm trying to, like, remember. So, mine was freshman year. I don't even know if this was fire, but it was the first time I was like, this motherfucker know what they doing. Mm-hmm. So, like, at Howard, like, you know, Howard wild as hell. So, like, we don't have, we didn't have co-ed dorms freshman year. Mm-hmm. So, we had visitation, but girls had to be out by a certain time in the days. But, but was homes, boy. Bro, what? <laughs> but this is, like, visitation don't start until, like, a month or two into cop, like, when you get there. Mm-hmm. So, the first month, no girls can be in here and no niggas can be in here. Damn. And I had this shorty, bro. I bagged her, like, the second day of orientation. Mm-hmm. And the next day, she was like, meet me behind Blackburn. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, our main, like, with a lunchroom, everything. Mm-hmm. Hey. And she gave me some head, bro. <laughs> Like, I, I swear, bro, I was the first person to get some in my freshman class, bro. And I'm not even exaggerating. Shout out to that, my nigga's first of his class. Bro, and she, I'm time. sitting on, this how I knew first it was to good. get that umgla, umgala, whatever they call that shit. That's I was lady. sitting on bricks, nigga. Like a brick, like um plant Damn. thing, like the planter thing. Bear ass, I was bro. Sit, Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My nigga looking like Humpty Dumpty on the wall. <laughs> and that's how I know cause because from that day on up until we got visitation, nigga, we met behind Blackburn. And she just, and she just was sucking my dick. Hey, shout out to those types that don't be wanting too much in return. Bruh. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Y'all will forever be respected in the community. The first time I feel like I had fire, fire head though was my sophomore year. And we were um, on spring break, bro. I ain't going to never forget it. We was uh we went to Miami. So it was me and my niggas. We went to Miami. And we flew there. I feel like I told this story before. Yeah, the infamous Miami trip. Yeah. And it was I had two bitches. This was, was it, I think this was my second threesome. And the girl was like, I'm trying she was like, I'm trying to lick your balls. <laughs> I think up until that point I had never had my balls licked. So I'm like, huh? What, what is this? <laughs> And then she did it, and the other girl was going. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. And then the next day, them bitches did coke. Send them out of here, huh? Nah, I stayed, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> them bitches, but, they hey. turned into zombies, nigga. God they started damn. fucking each other. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> they was like, you want some? I was like, no. <laughs> but I'm going to sit here. Hey, cocaine G, crazy, dude. Hey, fool. I was like a sophomore, so I was probably like 20 at best. Yeah. That's some good times around that age, bro. From like eighteen. Do y'all ever think back like, damn, bro, I can't believe I didn't made it this far, bro. I be thinking about the shit that I didn't did. Yeah, man. Even like risky pulling up to the T yeah. gets for some pussy, like. Yeah, yeah man. I still do that. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm not going hey, to the risky tea, head, crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool on the risky pussy, bro. Yeah. Like if a bitch like this, my address, and I, I look that shit up. Like I need rich head at this point. Nah, it ain't even worth it. I'm gonna be my meat go to sleep. Just give me rich head at this point, bro. I'm rich cool. Head. Nah, rich bitches be crazy too. Yeah, I'm they might not live in a crazy neighborhood. Yeah, I'm just yeah, talking about yeah, the yeah. environment. You might still get shot at their house on 40 acres in the middle of nowhere, but mm -hmm. shit, at least the head was I'm, fire. I'm sure we didn't all pull it up to a situation where it was like yeah, a lot of times. Bro. <laughs> so, definitely got over. You just, you just do, bro. You gotta like <laughs> think about it twice, and then the allure of the head just pulls you. <laughs> you just go with it, like shit. If I die, I die. Fuck it. Bro. That's really sad. Yeah, but I had a situation <laughs> where you you found out Shorty had a nigga. Like yeah. during the situation, like there was a time when it was like you was talking about rich, risky situations. This bitch, she like didn't time it right, or the dude just took too long to leave the crib. So you know, what I mean, she hit me up like, "Come over at boom, boom, boom." We been fucking. She said, "Come over at boom, boom, boom." So I'm doing my running around. Look, you know, it's about I, I still get there like 30 minutes, 40 minutes late, and then when I'm pulling up. Like the, a nigga was drove past me and looked at me like, <laughs> <laughs> hey. And then like you saw the energy. It was something that yeah, connected because you wouldn't have noticed that nigga any other for time, sure, bro. And, yeah. and it, that's what it happened. Then I just looped around past her crib and just parked like kind of the corner or something. And then I text her, I'm here. Oh. And then the dude pulled back in real uh, quick, like he was trying to uh, check. You know what I mean? He grabbed some. And then he left, and it's just like he came back for just random reason. I'm like, oh yeah. Uh oh. -uh. Did you stay? Oh yeah, I got some hair. <laughs> <laughs> so sure. I had a situation like hey, that. Uh -oh. Like this shorty that I was fucking with, like she was like my girl, but her baby daddy was <laughs> she crazy. She was like my girl. <laughs> she was, but she wasn't. It was kind of one of them. Hey. But her baby daddy was on bullshit. Like he'd be blowing her phone up, all type of shit. Mm -hmm. And then, I ain't gonna never forget. It was like, when I first got my first gun, mm. and. I had just beat that shit down, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Like, feeling like the man. And this one, I had my Mustang, nigga. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, fuck, I'm about to go sit in my car, smoke my mail. I ain't got no shirt on. I'm in the car smoking the mail. Like, he just pulled up. Like, he just looked like, he looked at me and then he drove off. Mm -hmm. I'm like, whatever, nigga. I got a gun now, <laughs> nigga. So what you wanna do? <laughs> so then I go back in the crib, like, mm -hmm. She, he started blowing her up, like, tell that bitch ass nigga to come outside. Da, da, da. Oh, damn. All right, man, we about to fuck again, bro. Go ahead, yeah, on that pussy. Yeah. That, yeah. is that pussy nigga, I understand. That shit was fire, bro. Like, that's the. Do, okay, I got another question. Do y'all remember the first time y'all fucked Raw? Yep. Yeah. I would never forget. I was condom man. You hear me? <coughs> like to the point where I was scared. Like, bro, I cannot have oh, sex without a condom. No for sure, that's how I go. And it was freshman year. Yeah, child to her. Took me to college, bro. And she was like, "Take that off." I was like, "Huh?" <laughs> and it was like, mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> "What the fuck is Life this?" Life changing. Now mine was like, I, we ran out, and then I was like, "We," I was like, "Damn, I ain't got no more condoms." She was like, "You don't." And then we just looking at each other. You know that that first raw in the in, 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 in situation, hey, man. and y'all yeah. just looking at each other. Give y'all the shoulders. It's fucking dead, man. Fuck Mine was the same time. The same girl I lost my virginity with. Right. So that's crazy. Yeah. So I, at Mason, freshman year, <laughs> <laughs> moved out there. I lost my mind. I thought I made it. <laughs> she was bad. She looked like. Uh, I always said she looked like girl from Saved by the Bell. Lisa, y'all remember her? Mm -hmm. Lisa Turtle. Who? Lisa Turtle. Is that that was her last I don't name? Know her last name. Mm -hmm. no, Lisa uh, yeah. Turtle. It was, oh yeah. The only so black I always girl. thought, yeah, the only black girl. This makes it nigga. She was the only black girl. Like, I was like, damn, she's so pretty. Like she was just put together. You know what I mean? I'm like, damn, was the first black woman I ever met with money, right? Like, I'm like, oh damn. I'm like, house big as shit. Anyway, she was my math teacher. My math tutor. <laughs> my teacher. Hey, my math tutor, my bad. Hey, <laughs> say winning. Nah, been hell no. Nah, that would have been a story, nigga. Nah, she was my math tutor. And uh man, shout out to her, man. She good people. I met her husband like later in life and everything. I ended up working with her husband. Like, damn, I, I, I think I ever I think I told him, like, man, your wife took my virginity. <laughs> oh my God, that's crazy. We used to hoop together and everything, bro. That was wild. Anyway, so she was a senior. I was a freshman. And she was my, like, we had, like, love. If you need help with math, they had certain, like, juniors and seniors that would help mm -hmm. out the freshmen, whatever. So one day we was just at the cafeteria, you know, doing our little, like, one of the little study halls. And uh, I think she asked me, she was like, you want to come back to my house? I was like, to study? 
<laughs> she was like, nah, for some sex. Like, I don't think she said that, but <laughs> whatever it was, I was like, hell yeah, like, let's go. But the other thing, her boyfriend was like the captain of my basketball team. Like, he was a black dude too. You know what I mean? She was a black girl. Shout out to me losing my virginity to a black woman. Anyways, so, I mean, she was fire. Yep. And uh, she's like, you want to come over? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. We go pull up to this big ass house. I'm like, I ain't never seen nothing like this. Right. I'm just like, mm -hmm. I ain't never seen that many garages on the side of a house. So I just say that, you know what I mean? I'm like, damn, you remember when you used to see the garages on the side of the house? You was like, oh yeah, they got it. Like, <laughs> you know, that was a thing at that one point. It was like, oh damn, they got the four, five of them on the side. So we pull up. I remember we, she had a red Volkswagen Beetle. I just felt like, damn, this bitch got money. I ain't had no car. I'm just riding with her. Like, <laughs> so we get to her house. You got the, you know, the balcony that stretch over the, you know, the foyer. I'm like, damn. Like, she was like, come on, let's go to my room. Like, where your beetles at? She was like, uh, they'll be home in a little bit. I was like, fuck that. Like, let me go down. She was like, oh, they want to even know we're here type shit. I was like, what? Damn. So, right. It was like that. So we go up there. We go in the room. Man, she put on a Leah Rock the Boat. That's how I man. lost my virginity to Aaliyah Rock the Boat. We put on the condom or whatever. And mm -hmm. man, I fucked this girl. I will I will not lie. I fucked her for three hours straight, nigga. <laughs> this bitch said, You're not a virgin. <laughs> I was like, Yes, I am. She was like, Then why aren't you coming? Like, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I ain't never came yeah, before with somebody true. like, you know what I mean? Like, so I was just fucking the shit out of her. Like, shit I seen on TV, I'm throwing her around, thinking I'm doing She probably like, oh, this nigga a professional. What the fuck? <laughs> like, so, and then it was like just later. So we that was the first session. And like we did it like two more times. And then like it was the third time. I never came. So she started being like, nah, I'm kind of getting offended that you're not coming. Like, so she started making it a challenge. Like, what the fuck? Like, so she would just invite me over, like, trying to fuck the shit out of me, make me come. I'm like, nope, still didn't come. If, even if I would have came, I probably would have told her because she was fucking good. So, <laughs> nut on the side real quick. Like, yeah, I need a break. Like, <laughs> but anyway, so I'm laying there, man. She finally just looked at me like, she was like, She's like, I was like, man, I got to pee. She's like, that's why you can't go pee, go pee. So I go pee. She bossing me around. I'm a little nigga. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I go in there. I pee. Best pee ever. Like, you know, when you get that one pee at one, you like, that's it's a, some that's pussy. That's crucial, like, nigga. Not yeah. after the nut yet. That's even better. I'm talking about during oh, the yeah, sex during. where it's like, exactly. all right. You got to take that pee break, bro. Yeah. So I go take the pee break. I come back. And, like, we put the condom on again. We start over. New condom, blah, blah, blah. We get going. Like I said, I'm fucking her again for, like, another 20 minutes. I'm enjoying it, though. This is my first piece of pussy ever. Like, I'm having fun. I ain't coming yet, though. Mm -hmm. Shorty said, uh, here, I want to do something. I was like, what? She's like, you care? You want to take the condom off? If you're scared, it's cool. Hit me like that type of shit. Like, I'm getting, like, damn, this little lady. I'm like, fuck it. Like, like cool. Like, she's like, uh, all right, here, come here. She's like, she got on it. We got on the ground. We left the bed. She was like, all right, uh, she like, she's walking me through this shit. I put her legs behind her head. So we flat on the fucking ground. And she took off the condom. And I fell in that pussy like, what the <laughs> fuck? What the fuck is this? <laughs> like, this is what I've been in this whole time? Right. Oh, man, I nutted in 30 seconds, bro. I went from three hours to 30 seconds, nigga. <laughs> that was the first time I nutted in some pussy, boy. Damn. Shout out to you though. I know your name. Ain't gonna nah. say it, bro. You a beautiful woman. <laughs> nah, say her name, bro. Yeah, I like her, man. She's a beautiful lady. Shout out to your family. Mm. All right, y'all. Everybody watched uh, Sprint on Netflix. That's an amazing, amazing um, documentary, bro. Yeah. You know, shout out to all the Olympic runners, man. Shout out to anybody that's fucking on Olympic level for real. The thing that stood out to me about that the most was uh, just the. The mentality that these, these motherfuckers had to have, mm -hmm. you know. Even I was watching with my daughter. She's like, yeah, he's so cocky talking about Noah Lyles. Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? That nigga keep winning, though. It's like you can't really, mm -hmm. you know, at the same time. Yeah, I might not be the nigga hanging with him, but I respect what he has to do and what type of mindset he has to put himself in yeah. to go out there every single time and perform on an Olympic level. That's bro. one of the niggas, uh, I think it was the... Uh, Breton dude, he was like, yeah, he be talking. Yeah. But he be winning. So yep. he's weird too. Like Noah, you who? can tell Noah. Yeah. Like he he kind of like off. You could tell like if he wasn't like in the Olympics here, probably he'd be one of the weird niggas. But he definitely was a beast. That. But to me, the way that like they put that together, mm -hmm. it still made it like super intense. Yeah, for sure. Like the the cinematography of it, like if you notice, like up until the end, when they show races. It was always from the front view. 
So it's like you can't really tell who winning, mm-hmm. and then they shoot it to the side like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But and one thing, one smart thing they did do for real is the first. If you realize the first episode, they didn't really even talk about Shakiri or Shakari, whatever her name is. Oh yeah, because yeah, yeah. like really, that's the only person I was watching it for. Like, mm-hmm. and then they brought it to the second episode. Like I didn't even finish it because I seen the second to last episode when she won. Yeah, and that shit was amazing to hear. Like that shit gave me chills. Like I damn. Like I, still I got almost one more, I got one shit, more like, episode to watch. I did that purposely. I'm just gonna wait to get home tonight. I'm gonna watch it tonight with my daughter. But yeah. that shit fire, bro. That shit is like you said, cinematography wise, that's cool. I appreciate it when like you know they got to the actual race. It was always a build up to the actual race, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when they hit it, I was always expecting to go to the next episode. Nah, that shit. They'll let you know who won in that episode. I like that. I think that's a new model for shooting. If we talk of cinematography, like I love the fact that you allow me as a viewer to just be in the flow, mm-hmm. you know. And then the whole next episode is like you're starting over. Like yep. you said, the shift to the women. It, was, it said women. black queens, right? Mm-hmm. Like it said queens, not black queens. That's what I was thinking. But shout out to y'all. Shout out to the white queens. Shout out to the hot tua clan as well. But you, say that. you know what I'm saying? Like that shit was fire but the main thing that stood out to me was just the mentalities man like yeah. you know the the insanity like shikari would be one of them girls we'd be like sit your ass down like you know what i mean like in any other situation we like damn she annoying yeah. you know what i mean like she just one of the hyperactive kids you know uh think about how many children out there just like her but their parents don't know what to do with them for real they ain't got no way to channel all that energy that's why i like her so so much because she literally reflects all those black children and around the world that's probably just hella edgy right just got so much energy and you can't script that though like that's the craziest part about the show is like Mm -hmm. her situation you cannot write that down and make it any better than it was Mm -hmm. like for them to just uh, uh, because she didn't have to win that race like oh yeah for her to win that race in that in that fashion that she did like Mm -hmm. and then they but when they went back and told like the other stories it just built up the anticipation like because I remember when she won, so I knew she was gonna win. But it's like to see it, everything that happened, like to see her coach and shit. Mm-hmm. Like I think they should hone in. I see what they was trying to do. They was kind of trying to like make it like all inclusive, like everybody. Like when they was telling the one nigga story who only won once. Like mm-hmm. I was like, that's cool. But I think some of those, some of that comes from they expected him to because they book him. Cause they gotta follow them up until the race, right? Cause that's, that's one I thing I say. like about it: the pacing of the show yeah. is like their careers. Cause they spend all this time training, but that the race be so short. So the pacing of the whole episode is like all that back end. It takes the whole yeah. episode, and then when they race, it's like thirty seconds. You know what I mean? So I fuck with they pacing, but but they gotta book a nigga. For that training time, yeah. yeah. So they they got they had it. They probably you know. reached out to everybody at the same time. But, like we need. Well, he won the Olympics before, so, so. he definitely was booked already. Yeah, like they yeah. was gonna follow him regardless. Mm-hmm. A lot of that footage probably ain't even come from the same shooters. They just you know they probably the producer. I'm sure went to different people. Like hey, I know you've been following this person. Do you have mm-hmm. some of the footage? You know, or if they got a lot of a big budget, then they can put cameramen with everybody. Like here's a plan, and yeah, then depending did. on who has the best year, that's who they going you know they gonna follow a lot of times, mm-hmm. right? But then you got all that leading up story, just like the dude who was just a one hit wonder, mm-hmm. right? You know. <laughs> His story would have probably went longer, right? He would have had the crew already with him if he won. But then it's like, all right, let's shift to Noah Lyles then because he yeah. he doing his thing, right? So I think it all makes a lot of sense to have everybody in there. You know, even the stories that kind of you can tell fell off, may not, you know, got big as, you know, Shakari or anything like that. But I think it just shows you how, uh, you know, how by an inch it is, bro. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that nigga who lost the race is still faster than 98% of the world. Mm. 99. I feel like that was a 99 point for sure. For the British dude, because he, he kept on losing to Noah, but when he got his third place, he was super excited. Yeah. When oh, you talking about the British? British I'm not record. talking about the British. I'm talking about, about the light skin. I know. Yeah, you talking about the. I'm okay, talking, yeah, I'm talking yeah. About, but that he, was but all of them, though. That's yeah, it's all yeah, the same. Yeah. yeah. You know I'm saying you talking about the milliseconds. Like people yeah. would be like, "Damn, nigga, you lost." But then, like you said, it takes so much just to be that great. So yep. when he got third. He he's super excited because mm-hmm. nigga, I worked my ass off. And he, he still made it into too. it. Yeah, he yeah. broke his British record, right? So, I mean, it still wins, bro. Like yeah. for those people, but then you can also still see like, nah, they won't want, bro. 
Like they was yeah. explaining, bro. Like the Jamaican coach said, nigga, this is our shit here in Jamaica. We ain't looking for silver. Yeah. We ain't looking for bronze. Mm-hmm. It's gold or nothing around here, mm-hmm. you know? And, and I'm sure that's every athlete that get on that right on there. They not looking for no silver. They not looking for a bronze. Every single time they line up and they hear that shot, bro, yeah. they going for a gold. They not. And if they lose in that race, even though they 99.9%, they be devastated. And you can yeah. tell they fuck with their mental. That's what happened to the light-skinned dude. Kinda. He lost that first one. He got injured, got in his head, lost yeah. how he was going. Just like he got in that one dude head that was shooting off too early. Mm-hmm. He kept getting disqualified. Hey, yo, pause, pause. Got in his head. <laughs> got in his head, though. That was crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, it, the mentality that it takes – to really win, especially a hundred meter, bro. Mm-hmm. One mistake, yeah. come on, you done, bro. That's crazy. Nigga was at the Olympics. He took off too early. False start. He, we, and he kept doing it. Over. But the fucked up part about tra- have you ever ran track? Mm-mm. Like if it's a double fault, like if somebody jump off sides, like if somebody fault the first uh, round, it don't matter who go the second time, you automatically disqualify. Yeah. So it got to be twice. Time. Yeah. So they didn't show like if something happened before that. Not for in the Olympics, it's only one. Oh, it is for, oh. for that level. It's only one. Oh time. damn, you can't I know that. Yeah, I don't know. I just know it happened to him twice. He was in his head. He had a different race. Yeah, yeah he did it a couple races. Yeah, it got in. He got in his head. I was listening to a podcast. Uh, it's it's about some dude. He was like a great pitcher. Uh, oh, that shit is real. Yeah, he was a pitcher. It's the same shit as that, though. So he he was a pitcher, and he was like, you know, I don't even know baseball like that, but the nigga was a beast. Let's just say that, right? Mm -hmm. And then, like, out of nowhere, this nigga just started throwing wild shit. Like, when he was able to throw shit, pinpoint target every time, bullseye, he Mm -hmm. somehow just lost it to the point, you know, they had to come out, stop the game, and take him out the game. And he never regained that. And then they was interviewing and just saying, like, he literally said he had this monster that it was just growing and lurking in his mind, telling him, like, yeah. you will never be able to get back to this or you won't be able to do that. You know what I mean? They called it what they call that, like uh, something on your shoulder, not the chip on your shoulder, but something like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's something, right? He just could not shake it, bro. So the mentality, though, just to win by inches or to lose by inches, right, it can fuck you up. Like when that one dude who had won that was it the two hundred was it the one hundred the fastest man he won the world championship dark skin nigga he ain't even want to go to the little after thing he was trying to lead the building oh, he was yeah. embarrassed you know what I'm saying that nigga was embarrassed he came, last, uh, he came in like four I think yeah. yeah Texas dude the one I think I'm was talking about Noah Lyle. I was like yeah he he talk <laughs> a lot but mm-hmm. you know I'm just more quiet you know uh, but yeah man he that he was embarrassed crazy, bro yeah. like you you literally is you faster than ninety nine point nine percent of the people in the world. But you lose that race, that fuck you up, man. My nigga um, that I went to high school with, Andrew Brackman, this nigga was like the number one rated pitcher in the world. This nigga was 6'9". Mm-hmm. He fucking, he, he got drafted by the Yankees. And like his mental just went out. Yeah. Like he played in the league, all that shit. But then like one day, it was just like he just fell off. Mm-hmm. And like at Moeller, bro, like sports is crazy. Like I remember... Bro, I seen Kyler Perry was at our fucking workouts, nigga. Uh, Bruce Pearl, all them niggas. Kyler Perry? Did I say Tyler Perry? No, you said Kyler Perry? Uh-huh. Yeah. Who was, that? <laughs> Who was Kyler Perry? Uh, oh. Kentucky coach. Okay. Uh, I don't know his first name. Yeah. But, like, our morning workouts used to have that. So, like, mm-hmm. he been going through that because we had three niggas on our team. They was called the Big Three, bro. And these niggas was on the news. Like, the news would be at our practice, all that shit. And it's like he had to start him from that was my junior year. So this was his senior year. And then like he got to the league, bro, and his just mental just went. Yeah. Like now this nigga, like, he got a big ass beard. He just be in the woods hunting and shit now. Like that's what I'm saying. And I'm like, that's scary. Like the, the yeah. brain is scary as fuck. Like For sure. that shit scares you me. Take small little, you know, misinterpretations or small uh you know, bad coding. So I look at the brain just like a computer, bro. So mm-hmm. if you put in the wrong code, it can call a, cause a virus and it can shut down different parts of your brain. I'm not talking even physiologically. I'm just saying straight psychologically because your brain and your mental power is that fucking strong. So as soon as you get that virus in you, mm-hmm. you know, that virus in your mind, that shit can grow and it'll spread and it'll spread into other parts of your life. Especially if that's the one that's like the big thing that got him all popular and, Mm -hmm. you know, that's his shit, right? Like you are, you know what I mean? I can guarantee you there's insecurities elsewhere as well when the thing that you was known for, the thing that you was built for, and that goes, 
it can fuck you up. So the way you got to nip that shit in the bud is you have to get to your inner voice. You know what I mean? You have to understand your inner voice all week that's all i've been on that's funny that we got here bro that's what this all is about me watching sprint was a full circle on it uh i've been listening to a bunch of podcasts that's been the focus is inner voice inner voice understanding your inner voice and the way you get to your inner voice is a lot of different ways you know what i mean like some people get to the better inner voice when they're just healthier mm -hmm. you know what i mean let's just talk about it on a physiological if you got less inf inflammation you know things like that you know, that's gonna help your brain and help the blood flow. But on a mental level, on a mental level, you have to be able to be confident. You have to know that your inner voice, or some people call it your God voice, you call it Holy Spirit, I don't care what you call it. The, the main thing is learning how to connect to it and trusting it mm -hmm. and knowing who you are at your core. Cause like, and that's the thing. That's why people like, you know, if you're richer or poor, whatever, you got more money, you got more bitches, more cars, less cars, whatever, you know, you can still just have so much insecurity and depression in your life. If you do not nip those type of things in the bud when they come, cause it happens to everybody. You have to strengthen your inner voice fast. That's another way. I'll give you some tools before I, in the topic on it, bro. Fast, whatever you got to do to hear and make your inner voice the loudest voice in your mind because you're going to hear a thousand of thoughts every day, 10,000, 15,000 thoughts, and most of them be negative thoughts because our brain is actually programmed to have more negative thoughts to protect you. You know, in our primal, in our primal days, it was better to have these negative thoughts about possibly seeing a tiger in the woods because you had to run from that shit, right? There ain't no tigers here. Well, in Cincinnati, sometimes it is. So, they? You feel me? <laughs> and the ones to be from the zoo in Avondale, you know what I mean? So watch out for those real, tigers. Nigga? I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Probably shit shit done got loose from the zoo in Cincinnati a couple times. So, mm -hmm. You know, I could be. But yes, in those times, hunting and gathering time, whatever, when you were when you was the actual prey on the fuck in the wilderness, yes, it's good to have those negative thoughts. But now, living in the age we live in, bro, just we can have a bunch of things to complain about, just like I ain't fucking holidays, right? We can have a million things to complain about, but for real, I feel like we live in the most one of the most safest and best times of 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 our existence, sure. right? Like, you know what I'm saying? We ain't we ain't gotta deal with motherfucking fire and brimstone falling from heaven, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't got to deal with motherfucker crazy-ass genocide. Some people in the world, too. You know what I mean? Luckily, once again, we in America. You know what I mean? Okay, so shout out to Ju Okay, July 4th. Okay, you growing on me. All right, thanks for not listening. <laughs> but there is mental genocide right here still. There's systematic genocide, genocide still going on. You know what I'm saying? They definitely have these things that are going on to, you know, uh, oppress and suppress uh, certain people. But at the end of the day, I, I still think this is uh, one of the better times to live in history, man. So, you know, strengthen that inner voice, bro. I challenge all my niggas right here, just y'all too, and then whoever else listening, uh, listen, man, strengthen that inner voice, bro. Like, and give that inner, like, let that inner voice be the most confident voice in you. Not, not the voice that is the fake voice, because sometimes you have up moments in your life, right? And then that up moment can become, uh, you know, the strong voice, like you, because you have things or because you have a certain level of access or popularity, you can let that voice, that clout voice be your voice. But what happens if everything is stripped away? You didn't strengthen the voice that was there with you the whole time. So now you have to start all the way over. Now you're an asshole, bitch. So this comes this coming to you as a brother. Like you my brother. So how do you so I'm the type of person I can't sleep mm -hmm. with I can't just fall asleep at night because my mind goes, 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 mm -hmm. goes. It'd be good, it'd be bad, it'd be good, it'd be bad. So I turn on the TV. So yeah. like the other day, yesterday, matter of fact, it was like I was so tired. And when I laid down, like the voice just kept going, kept going. Yeah. Like, and I don't know crazy shit, but it's like no, I know what you mean. my yeah. mental. It's chatter. So, they call it chatter. So I, I turn mental it, chatter. Yeah, I turn the office on. That's my favorite show because it distracts my mind. Mm -hmm. So what is something that I can do? Like I've gotten better actually. Like when I used to wake up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom and shit. Mm -hmm. If I lay back down, if I woke up, I would have to turn the TV back on. But now I'm at a point like I'm at peace. So I can go right back to sleep without turning on. But if I get to that situation where it's like, damn, I'm just laying here and I yeah. can't control that, like what's something that I can do to? I'll give you, I'll give you science, then I'll give you like action, right? Not, not even science, I'll just give you a perception, uh, what would I call it? A, I'll give you a philosophy. Um, and then I'll also give you a practice. 
thing because I went through the same shit. Mm -hmm. like, and, and you go through it over and over. So I might not be going through it now, but I'm, I'll go through it again. We all do. We have ups and downs of these things, right? Uh, everyone has this chatter, right? This chatter is always there. Where the chatter comes from is all of your experiences and all the habits you have created from your experience. When I say habits, most people go straight to like smoking and things like that. But the way that you program your brain to, your brain to respond and think about things is a habit as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Your synaptic nerves make connections to build this perception you call life, right? And so what you have to do is put space between you and that. That's why y'all be hearing me like on jujitsu and shit. And the reason because they, they call it, they actually call it a... Uh, space management or it was another word but i've been calling it space and manage it but it's it's actually called distance management management that's actual term that they use and with distance management you're you're managing the distance of limbs and different things that might come at you you remember jujitsu is all grappling is there's no throwing of a punch and things like that so in order to win a fight like that it's probably better for you to get real close to someone because the closer you are they have no power behind their punches so you have to manage distance but but if they good as a, a fighter as you are, they know how to, you know what I mean, do things in that low distance just like you. So now you're managing the smallest maneuvering of muscles. It Sometimes it comes down to the feel. You might just feel their thigh do something. You know, okay, there's 16 different moves that's going to come from that thigh doing that, right? And that's how you, I ain't there, I ain't no black, but I'm just understanding, you know, the quality of thinking you have to have when you're in close proximity with something that's, you know, an aversion. Same thing with your thoughts, right? You have to create the distance you have to know that this chatter is literally just a projection of something because you got to think this chatter can only come from where the past mm. even if it's like you say it don't be nothing right it just be a bunch of things you know some of it's serious some of it's just extra some of it ain't got no reason to even be here right now i'm trying to sleep it's just a bunch of chatter put space between you and the chatter your inner voice and the chatter and that's just the philosophy of it the pra the next thing of practice is you know, the easiest practice I give anybody, this is the best one to start. Like, when people ask me shit like this, I'll be like, bro, you got to meditate. You know what I'm saying? Like, meditate, breathe. Like, and I understand meditation is just hard for a lot of people. Uh, and the, the goal of meditation is just to bring yourself present. You know what I mean? So you can do that in other ways. And the best practice that I ran across was this guy, he was just talking, I think it was like a Joe Rogan podcast. He was like, man, people just practice being more present. And Joe Rogan asked him, how do you become more present? He was like, man, you know, the easiest thing you can do is if you're driving on the road, just, just focus on the signs. Just focus on like, just look at the McDonald's and just notice it's gold. The golden arches on the McDonald's sign is gold. You know what I mean? Okay, I see the mouse power sign. Like it's say 25 on it. Oh, it's in black letters. And then you slowly start to just become more present where you are in the moment. Because if you ever think about it, you can't really think of a whole bunch of different shit if you put your mind on something. So in practice, I would start there, man. When you're just, if you feel an anxiety, and this go good if you, if you got anxiety in crowds, like notice people what they're wearing. Let's see how many times you can see green in a crowd. You know what I mean? Notice who's drinking what. How many brown glasses do I see or, do, or clear glasses? How many people drinking white claws? Just bring yourself present. You know what I mean? Presence is the best way to build the most confidence because, first of all, if you want to look at it on just like a regular, like, I'm better than you type of way, which a lot of people do, which I wouldn't necessarily say do it like that. But if you really, if that pushes you, if that propels you and makes you feel competitive, man, just think about, about how many people aren't present. That right there should give you a little more confidence. Like, you know what? I'm actually here present. Like, I'm right here present. I notice what's going on. I notice who's around. I notice, you know what I mean? Everything that's in my life. You don't have to respond to everything. You ain't got to be a part of everything. You, and that brings to the next biggest thing, bro, is it's a big thing about being attached and then detached from certain things. And that comes with that space. When you put that space in there, understand, bro, understand whoever's listening, that you are not attached to these to these thoughts. Even if these thoughts, you might be like, oh man, man, it's something I did. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm going over my head because I did something wrong. Even if you did something wrong, presently, you're you're not doing it. It happened. Now you're just replaying the same thing that you don't even want to be a part of or associated with, and you're bringing it into your present right now in the now time. So first thing, look at it as space. And then the practice is just start being observant of the things around you. Next time you with maybe your family and there might be some anxiety with your family sometimes, right? Just be present. Just notice 
Yeah, I mean, what what color is the fucking what what mom is wearing today? Or you know, let me look how my brothers are interacting. Just take yourself out of it, out of the situation, and just be an observer and put space between you, thoughts, object, relationships. You should put space between everything, man. You know, so that's it, bro. Like, that's and it. that's easy. You know what I'm saying? That's something anybody can manage. Just mm-hmm. and it, just practice it. When you got free time, next time you're in your car, you just, and some reason you think of like what Zay said. You know what I'm saying? Just try it. Like, okay, let me just, mm-hmm. and you will see. It really works, man. It really works. And then work work yourself to meditation. I, I love meditation. I think everybody should get into it. Meditation is not sitting there for two hours. Meditation can be just twelve quick breaths. You know what I mean? Sometimes my med- my meditation is just counting to 12, bro. And yeah, I challenge y'all to do that. If you ain't never meditated or you meditate very little, I guarantee you it would be very hard to take slow in and out breaths and actually count from 12 to 1. That's one of the craziest practice ever, bro. Like, by the time you get to, like, 6, you be like, damn, what number I'm on? It's wild. And you start to notice how much your brain really be chattering. And it's really fucked up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, damn, I can't even so count from 12 to 1. Is meditation trying to clear your mind? It's about being present. You can. That's the other thing. You can never clear your mind. Yeah. Right? Uh, I heard a great teacher say you have to start looking at thoughts just like you look at the clouds in the sky. Mm. I mean, yeah, there's some certain days where it's sunny and bright and it's all blue sky. But most days, it's going to be a cloud in the sky. Dom, the monk, go, monk, and you have to just see these clouds slowly passing. You acknowledge it. But going back to that attachment, detachment thing, I'm not attaching to that cloud of thought. It's just let it go. Let it go. They're going to come. You can't stop thoughts. You learn to live with them. So for the quick reel, so you're saying people who want to be in that space rule rule or tip or suggestion number one is meditate and be present. Nah, suggestion number one is just start to observe everything around you. Just look at the objects. Just look where you are. Feel, feel the seat you're sitting on. Listen to, there's a vibration. Like if you hear the speaker right, if you, if you got headphones on, you can feel the vibration from my voice right now. Or if you in a car, you can feel the car moving. But how many times have you really rode in a car and then you thought about it, like you didn't feel the car moving at all? Or how many times you went to a destination, you don't even know how you really got yeah, there. You just like, end up oh, there. Shit, That's I've been the, driving. Yeah, it's the same, same exact thing. Just slow yourself down and just feel in a moment. That's suggestion number one. Like just do that right now. If you listen to my voice and you're watching this podcast, bro, just like look at the colors, the color of my shirt, G's hat. You know what I mean? Look around your house. How many how many things matches pants? Like how many red things can you see? Just bring yourself present. And then that's just the brain. You can't think of too many things at once, bro. Like, just focus on shit around you. You know what I mean? And and, and phew, that's crazy, man. Like, you know, uh, that's that's probably the best thing, man. Like, it, you know, the best example is the car example, bro. You know what I mean? Everybody got that, man. You just, just get there. So be present and then try to meditate to bring yourself present as well? Yeah, I would, I would recommend. So meditation is life. What I'm telling y'all to do is a form of meditation. That is literally what meditation is. If you start any beginner's meditation classes or courses you take, which I usually just go, you know, there's a few apps, like I always go for the free ones, but they got something you can pay $20 a month for and they take you through a whole course, you know what I mean? And they'll start you super slow and they'll start you with just being present, like I'm telling you how to do. And then when you're breathing, you just concentrate on the breath. It's the same thing. You know, all the beginner, beginner courses are going to say, Breathe in and concentrate on the breath. See where it goes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? See where the breath ends in your body. And then when you breathe it out, notice how, you know, how your your abdomen, like your abdomen kind of sinks in when you breathe out. Mm -hmm. You just notice in the present things. And following the breath is just another, you know, that's why it's it's big in spirit, bro. That's why, you know, uh, when God breathed, Breath, breathe or breathe. I don't know how you say the past 10 version of breathe, nigga. When he breathed into Adam, right, in his nostrils after he formed him out of dirt. You know, breath is synonymous in every religion. They talk about breath. You know what I mean? Breath is big. So, uh, yeah, that would be uh, another big part of it, man, and just understanding how important the breath is. That's so imp- That's If you're going to get into meditation, it's all about the breath. I mean, shit, when you're playing sports, it's all about the breathing. You know what I mean? Shit, let's be honest. You fucking, you got to know how to breathe right. You want to keep going. You know what I mean? It's yeah, all I'm, I'm life is a, a couple of times. Yeah, if you ain't got your breathing right. Oh, yeah, shit, you, bitch. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? Or they fast. do something to throw it off. You're like, oh, <laughs> you're like damn, I'm going to bro the extra broth right here. Oh, my God. 
two breaths in one on accident. Now you're choking off breath. That's crazy. So that's all. Meditation, just slow it down, man. And uh, breathe, bro. But I, I love meditation. Anybody come to me about meditation, you know what I'm saying? I thought about doing a meditation podcast, but I ain't trying to be one of them niggas. I ain't used to trust myself because I know if I get to talking in my meditation voice, it's over for these months. <laughs> like, y'all been in say pod. Like, we just know. came up with three <laughs> new ideas. We got the head cons- consultation. Yep. We got Zay's meditation uh, pod. Mm-hmm. Facts. Jeez, freak house. Right, that's all he wants. Hey. Well, he's trying to put freaking everything. Look. No diddy. Because <laughs> you bitches can leave if you want to. Got that. Uh, uh, Just leave my clothes here. <laughs> there's the Uber, there's the door. Right. Leave the madness. Oh, God. And take the madness with you at the same fire. time. <laughs> I'm about to start like a, just a little section. Like, yeah, you need to start a little truth. madness box. Yeah. <laughs> like a lost and found just to close niggas. I'm gonna have to get a sign out list, nigga. Ah. <laughs> Gotta say that. Dumb, hey, who dumb, signed dumb. out the green hoodie? Oh, God. Nah, I, just, I was getting that one back. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It. it was for certain articles you had to get back. Yeah. I've been there. Some shit you don't even give a fuck about. You'd be like, all right, whatever. Nah, you you watch her leave, like, damn, she got on my shirt. It's cool. I gave, I low key need some shit back. But it's good. <laughs> Put your put your bat bat uh batting signal up, bro. <laughs> Go ahead. Get my shit back. Bitch. <laughs> hey, hey, you know who you are. Right. Get my nigga his shit back. Yeah. All right, so uh I wanted to talk about this young lady right here and what she say. And I wanna get your opinion, but I gotta send it to you. You gotta put this on, bro. All right. Shit, nigga, I was like, <laughs> hey, that nigga still traumatized from the fourth. See, fuck holidays. Got our niggas jumping and shit. All right. Bad bitches. <laughs> Shout out to the pink crew. Mm-hmm. Uh, pink Panthers. Blush. Dates are reserved for a man you are dating. If you want to get to know a man, you should meet for coffee, a drink, meet in a park, take a walk, have a conversation. There should be no exchange of money to get to know a man. Do not take anything from him. Get to know him. Ask questions. Find out if you have a future together. If you are intentional about dating, Mm. stop expecting men to court you before they get to know you. Bitch. Hey, chill, bro. (laughs) Gotta put fifty dollars in the bitch bucket. (laughs) Court you. (laughs) I, I I saw that, and this ain't a woman bash thing at all, but uh. But I'm a Man, that's something. No, nah, no, nah, I ain't. That's something that I've always been on. Like, I actually love. God damn. What? <laughs> what is that? Is that my phone? That's her. <laughs> oh, yeah. You went to her page. Yeah, she fired. Um, <laughs> oh, fuck. He threw me off the simulation. Bring me back present. Okay, the camera pee. black. All right. <laughs> Joy got a white cup. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I, you know, I saw that. And it, first of all, it's refreshing to hear that from a woman, right? Yeah. For me, anyways, because I've been in that situation. That's the, literally what I like to do. I think we talked about it. You go to a movies, you can't talk to a woman in the movies. Never go. You to can movies. never talk to a girl in the movies. You barely can really talk to them at dinner. They worried about all this shit, bro. Trust me. A woman's worrying about everything. Just like I might be worried about everything. You know what I'm saying? Especially if I really like her, or you know, I might not be at my most secure at that time. So I'm, you know, am I am I holding my spoon right? You know what I'm saying? Am I chewing too loud? All that shit yeah. during 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 a uh, dinner can come up. Yeah. Uh, my car gonna get declined. All that. Nigga, that's happened to me before. That's a trauma. That's a trauma. Hey, nigga, I got to think about it. Every time that, that damn check come, I'll be like, damn, hold on. Like, I know I got it, but do I? <laughs> like, it, right. Let me just check just in case before I even walk in here. I might have to stand her up. Like, You know what I mean? All that shit brings that type of anxiety. It's not a present situation, bro. Like, the, I've, I've invited women on to hikes or walks to the park as a first date, bro. Like, and the key word is don't expect us to spend money on some people that we don't know. Like you should, first of all, and that's how I know a lot of women be out here just be doing that shit for the fun of it. Because if you're really looking for a nigga, you should look at that. You should say, oh, this nigga, you gonna call that nigga a bird nigga, right? Or you gonna call that nigga a trick because that nigga just went all out and above the, for a first date for nothing. He don't even know you. That should be a red flag if I was y'all. For me, it would be a red flag. Women act like it's not a red flag. They always be like, nah, that's it. But 
then you ask them, like, oh, did it work out? You with them? Oh, nah, nah, nah. You you can tell me about 12, 13, 14 real exclusive days that y'all went on in y'all life, and are y'all with that person? Yes, okay, we get it. A nice little small 10%, 15% of y'all actually married the nigga, which is cool. He did it right. Maybe that's what his focus was. But if you just out here dating, if you just out here dating, and you know that's what you're doing, you know you're looking for your person, what's wrong with a coffee date? What's wrong with walking through the park, having a real conversation without the anxieties of, of, of letting you get dressed up? That's what it's about. Let's be honest. Y'all just want to get dressed up. You want to look good. Nah, nah, I almost cussed. Nah, B, put on, put on those hiking shorts. Put on some gym shoes. Put your hair back in a ponytail. And let's, like, let's go for a walk. I'll meet you there. I'm going to drive there. We're going to meet at the banks. I'm going to drive to the banks. You know what I mean? I'm going to meet you there. I ain't even coming to pick you up the first time. That's my move anyways. When I first talked, like, all right, I'll meet you there. You know what I'm saying? Because first of all, I take all that away. Don't feel like I'm just coming to pick you up and you got to have that anxiety of some weird shit. Or if you want to leave or something, I want you to have your car. You know what I mean? Shit. I'm the type of nigga, if you ain't feeling right here, what you need? You need Uber money? I'll send you home. Like, you know what I mean? I'm that guy. You know what I mean? So a walk through the park, bro. Um, being able to have some coffee, some simple shit, so you can really have a conversation with someone. Is Make sure that coffee is tier, Moya. Bro. You Moya Drive Coffee, bro. Dot Dom, com, Dom, 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 for Dom, sure. Dom, Dom, Dom. Um, well, I mean, what y'all, I mean, y'all know I'm long winning. I go on about everything for a while, bro. But what y'all thoughts on this, bro? I think where I'm at, like with it, it's like I'm a homebody. So let's hit a bar real quick. You know what I'm saying? Let's. Because I understand the anxiety that women have to go through. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, they have to protect themselves. My first go-to is pull up to the crib, bro. Like, yeah, we can link. If you comfortable. Because I don't want no bad energy in here at all. Like, that's my biggest thing. Like, if you feel like you're going to be not even weird, mm. but if you feel like you're going to have some kind of bad energy, don't come to my spot. Like, I'll get enough. I'll get myself mentally ready to go. Mm. We can go grab a drink or whatever. Like, that's my go-to is, like, let's get a drink because, A, we both going to feel a little more comfortable. B, we going to have a little better conversation because we open up when we drink. Mm -hmm. So that's my go-to. Like, I know Zay be in the park and shit. I ain't fucking with no park. I'm not going to no park. Or even if it's I on some... I fuck with the park, man, but... But you, you outdoorsy nigga. Like, I'm not an out... Like, I'm outside all day, so I love being in the house. Like Yeah. I'm just saying, the simplicity, bro. Yeah. It don't matter if you're in the park. It don't matter if you're pulling up to the crib. Like you said, motherfuckers might not be comfortable. Yeah. The majority of women I know, I'm not necessarily going to invite them to my crib the first time, right? Mm. But... I mean, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. You know what I mean? And I don't but even want to say. You can kind of get that. You can gauge that vibe where it's like. Yeah, but I don't even want to say like it work as in like you trying to get them to crib or something. Like half the time, you ain't even expecting shit. Like, you know what I mean? If it yeah. happens, it happens. That's great. But I think the most important takeaway, bro, like simplicity, bro. Get somewhere where you can have a conversation with people. Like y'all doing this shit for what they doing it for? I can name a few things. Maybe for the Instagram thing, for you to, you know what I mean? Go on your story, show your little plate at the nice restaurant with the guy who picked you up in the, you know what I mean, car with the cool lights that change color for you. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. We got all that over here too. Uh, but <laughs> at the end of the day, it's really just about conversation. Talk to people, bro. Y'all not talking. To, motherfuckers ain't talking to people. Let's be honest. Yeah, the first link shouldn't Let's be honest. cost more than fifty dollars. I think that's a, that's doable. If that Shit, like a couple if we coffee, coffee can cost you twenty bucks. Yeah, if we doing you know coffee, I mean? a couple drinks, you know what I'm saying? Like bitches be expecting some extravagant shit. And it's like, bro, like like you said, I don't even know you. I don't, I don't even know, know that if I care to spend my money on you. I mean, like but y'all agree that's a red what shouldn't that be a red flag? I, I, I get what take, you're yeah. saying. It's give or take. Yeah. I get what, what you mean by give or take. I gotta expand. I don't know what you mean. Like the the shorty who want an expensive elaborate date is a red flag. That's what you're saying. I'm saying the dude.